I have been in the data space a while and Bento ML is probably the coolest company name I've worked for. So very excited to tell you guys where that came from. Um, to start, uh, I'm really excited to be here to talk to you guys about our latest open source project, Open LLM. Um, it's a lot about what we were talking about today. It's how to operate these LLMs in production. So I'm Tim Liu, I'm head of product here at Bento ML. Um, what the industry mostly knows Bento ML for is for our framework for packaging and being able to serve models at scale. And so where the name Bento ML came from was what we do is we take your model, we take your code, we take your dependencies and we package it into one deployable unit, a Bento, so that you could ship it to production and scale it. So the, the way that we think about things at Bento ML is we think about how, how do we make the developer experience really, really nice, give pe developers the, the power to make things really efficient and scale things. And so when we see specific use cases like the LLM use case, we get really excited and we dive right in and we look at all the different ways and challenges that um, deploying LLMs to production can bring. So over the last year, I think we've all seen how LLMs um, can really transform the business landscape. Uh, I, I talked with a few people in the room about pre and post chat GPT world. I like to think that we're a little bit of the OGs because we were doing ML and AI before chat GPT, just like Arise. Um, and then, then when chat GPT did blow up the world, we can see how LLMs um, can have so many impacts on businesses um, across industries. But it also comes with a lot of challenges. I think there, there's a lot of people out there who haven't been deploying LLMs in production. I, I think there's a couple people, OpenAI, they're, they're doing a pretty good job, I think, generally. Um, but for everybody else who's deploying open source LLMs, there's a, a whole lot of challenges that we're having to look at. And I'll, I'll actually show you firsthand some of the challenges that we're trying to solve. And I'm going to pray to the demo gods that the internet holds up and electricity is OK. So for example, cost. You're running Llama 2. It's an open source, commercially available model that's supposed to be awesome. What, what machine do you even run it on? I think that was one of the, I still get that question. What do you run Llama 7B on? I'll show you a couple of ways that we can run it. Um, but depending on the machine you run it, that's going to affect cost. Latency is also a really big challenge here because depending on how much uh, data you can pump through it and how fast your performance is, that actually also affects cost. And then in, in addition, I think a lot of people were talking about um, evaluation and data quality. I'll tell you anecdotally and from personal experience, an LLM that has been quantized to int4 is not as smart as the LLM out of the box. So what, what we're trying to do with Open LLM is we're trying to make it as easy as possible to evaluate all of these open source um, LLMs that there are out there. So we've got our you know, one simple command way to run it, um, pip install and then open LLM start llama. And I'll, I'll show you this in a second. Um, and then we're, we're not just trying to make LLMs easier to run, but we're also trying to bring the industry's best practices for optimizations, um, for running them smaller or faster or more cost efficiently. Um, on top of that, we're also bringing tooling for fine tuning. And uh, I'll, I guess I'll talk about all of that in a second. What I'm actually going to do real quick is I'm going to start up a Llama 7B. And it's going to take a minute. That's why I'm going to start it up right now. One of the things we're working on is model initialization. So the, the time it takes to actually turn on the model. Um, so I'm going to run NVIDIA SMI right here, our friendly GPU utility. And then I'm going to start with a pretty simple model. This is Llama 2. 7B chat. So very, if, we, if I did open LLM start llama, I think our default is a llama 1.1. One one. I'm, I'm actually going to do llama 2 7B chat. I'm running on a single AN with um, 23 gigs of memory. So 
you can see it start to load up the model here as the um, the mega the the memory starts to load up. I think it's gonna it needs to load up to about 13 gigabytes, which is gonna take about a minute. <laughs> so I'll go back to the slides. So the idea here is. Uh, with this open source project, you have access to about 50 of the most popular open source models. It's actually really easy to pull any model from Hugging Face into the library and run it as well. Um, the, the ones right here are the ones that we've tested and, and are testing actively, but you can run your own fine-tuned models as well as any model from Hugging Face. In addition, one of the things that um, we're trying to support more is for more integrations. We know LLMs don't just stand by themselves. There's a whole world of tooling out there. We're integrated with Langchain and Transformers agents. We are working on Lam Llama Index right now. Uh, it will be done soon, Jerry, wherever you are. <laughs> and then once, once you've turned on your, your, um, your LLM, once you've started it up, we give you a bunch of different standardized ways for interacting with them, certainly HTTP and SSE for streaming chat. And then we also give you gRPC out of the box, as well as a couple CLI and Python interfaces for easily interacting with your LLMs. So I'll get back here. So now this Llama 7B is loaded up. It's about 13 gigs in memory. It's good to keep a little bit extra um, unallocated that way, when you're sending data to it, um, it actually allocates memory um, as the, the tokens are coming in. It's better for continuous batching. So here's, here's just a simple REST API that we have out of the box for trying it out. I'm pretty sure the first... What is your name? Pretty sure the first query is always kind of slow, but we'll, we'll see. Oh, actually, that was pretty fast. So this is Llama 7B unquantized. Sometimes you get <laughs> output. I'm not really sure um, <laughs> where that's coming from, and then I'll run it again. And um, it, it comes back with a slightly better answer. So Sherlock Holmes, th this is my general finger in the wind question. Sherlock Holmes is really what I'm looking for. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run the same model, but I'm going to use dash dash backend VLLM. VLLM is a, um, is a project developed by some really smart guys at Berkeley. It's an open source project for speeding up, um, speeding up LLMs and quantize, they're, they're working on the quantizing PR right now. Um, the, like I was saying, the idea behind Open LLM is we bring to you all of the best practices across the industry for speed, performance, um, latency, cost. So we can actually run, I did run this model on a the smallest machine that Amazon has the other day, and quality was a, a little bit hit or miss, but it did run. Um, quantization, for example, we, we support bits and bytes and GPTQ. I'll show you GPTQ in a second. A variety of backends. Um, we have options to run the model across multiple GPUs, if that's the machine that you have access to. Certainly streaming response for chat. Um, recently, in the last month, we released a feature that allows you do, to do embedding generation um, across several of the, I, I think, at least several classes of the open source models. So that, that's one of the reasons we're excited to um, integrate with Llama Index so that we can use our embedding generation to kind of get in that um, vector database um, in orchestration scene. And then um, fine tuning, we're still working on that. Um, it is in the code base. We have several notebooks where you can fine tune Llama, OPT, and Falcon. Um, I, I think, as everyone was saying, fine tuning is probably a whole day unto itself, but um, we're seeing lots of different use cases for it. So now we're up with VLLM. Yeah, so 
It doesn't really help the memory very much, but the, the speed in v, with VLLM is usually quite a bit faster. without any quality loss. Yeah, so that was faster in general. I, I, I don't remember what our benchmarks were for how much faster it was, but yeah, and then no, no quality loss, very simple answer there. It doesn't start talking to itself. So now I'm gonna show you quantized with GPTQ, which is maybe not the best quantization out there, but better than maybe normal quantization with full lossiness. Um, I am adding this dash quantized GPTQ here um, and running this GPTQ uh, model weights from Hugging Face. And so you'll see here that the model in memory is actually a lot smaller than the, other, than the other models. I think it'll load up to about four gigabytes. Sorry, this is a super technical demo. <laughs> yeah, right there. So same model, same uh, similar weights, much smaller in memory, much more able to run on smaller machines, and we'll, we'll see how much it talks to itself. Oh, actually, that, that was actually pretty good. Yeah, so there's GPTQ. I think um, there, there's a couple new optimizations that are supposed to be a little bit less lossless um, than GPTQ. Oh, he, here we go. Here he's starting to not make as much sense. Um, so there's a few additional optimizations that we're working on integrating now. Um, super new field, really excited to be in it and to be integrating all the latest uh, optimizations out there and working with uh, a, a really great developer community to, to kind of further open source LLMs. <laughs>